Hey guys, real quick before we get started, DC sent me some comics early a few weeks ago to unbag and make a video for, and I finally get to share it with you. So go over to their fan channel on YouTube, I'll put the address here, and check out what I made for them. I think you'll enjoy it. Without any further ado, on to today's episode. <sighs> Alright guys, time we had a talk. No yelling, no over the top antics, no bullshit. Let's get down to business. Let's discuss Man of Steel. This is the week. On Friday, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice will be released for all of us to finally see. Now if you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you'll know that I'm not exactly looking forward to this. Before we get started, I feel like I must address this. It's fine for a comic book, but that's a dumb name for a movie. And I'm just gonna say it, this super augmented voice it just sounds wrong. It doesn't sound like Batman or any hero for that matter. Everything I've seen so far just leads me to believe that this is not heading in a direction that I want it to. And 90s looking Aquaman just solidified that feeling. Meaning that they're gonna add the cape in post using CGI. Excuse me for a second. On what planet, in what multiverse, is Superman in a rated R story? I'm really trying, guys. Which I know isn't fair. I haven't seen this yet. How can I be so negative towards something I haven't seen yet? Well, to understand why, we need to talk about the movie that preceded it, the aforementioned Man of Steel. It was 2013, and I was really, really looking forward to this movie. The trailers made it look like a Superman movie about all the heart and emotions of the character. One that would get into the hows and whys of who he is and why he does what he does. But the movie I saw was a big dumb action movie. Now, believe it or not, my issues with Man of Steel aren't with the deviations from the source material, although we'll get to that. It's not with the destruction of Metropolis and Smallville, although we'll get to that too. And it's not with the death of General Zod, although trust me, we will get to that. Now, my main reason for not liking Man of Steel is honestly because it wasn't that good. The acting is flat in a lot of places, scenes don't really connect very well from one to the next, subplots get introduced but don't go anywhere, simple story elements become needlessly complicated, and there's an overall emphasis on bigness and spectacle over subtlety and nuance. Like the scene where Clark gets back at the truck driver for making fun of him in the bar by impaling his truck with telephone poles instead of, so say, maybe melting his tires with heat vision. Or how Jonathan Kent couldn't die of a heart attack like he did in the Richard Donner films, teaching young Clark that there are just some things that Superman can't solve. Instead, Jonathan Kent has to die in a tornado, teaching young Clark that sometimes it's okay to let people die if it means keeping your secrets safe. That's what bothers me about all the destruction at the end. Not that there's too much of it, it just seems needless. It has no real weight. As for him snapping Zod's neck, I would have been okay with this. I really would have. The problem is they don't set up anywhere in the film that killing is a big deal to him. And once he does it, it doesn't get brought up again. The scene right after that is a very lighthearted, funny scene and doesn't connect with the one that preceded it, like I was talking about before. As for deviations from the comics, the only one that really bothers me is Jonathan Kent. Kevin Costner teaches young Clark to keep his powers hidden from the world and from society at large. This is the opposite of the traditional Jonathan Kent who tries to teach his kid right from wrong and how to use his powers for good. Now believe it or not, there's actually a lot of stuff I like in Man of Steel. There really is. I love Diane Lane as Martha Kent. I loved Michael Shannon as General Zod. I even own one of these. I liked his assistant Theora. I loved all the stuff in the beginning, showing Clark Kent on his journey to figure out who he is. That scene after he snaps Sod's neck might just be the best scene in the movie. And that score by Hans Zimmer might just be some of his best work. It's big and bombastic and it feels like a modern Superman. This is not the worst superhero or comic book movie ever made. Not by a long shot is probably the most disappointing, and I know that a lot of that is on me for setting my expectations way too high. And now a sequel is coming, but this isn't just any ordinary sequel. This is a sequel that has Batman in it. Which, rationally or not, when you put Batman in a movie, 
I become very critical about it. He's my favorite literary character and I just want to see him done right. And without knowing anything about this movie, ignoring interviews and trailers or the fact that Ben Affleck is playing Batman, which never bothered me by the way, knowing that this is a sequel to a movie I didn't like doesn't fill me with a lot of hope. Now I've been proven wrong in situations like this before. I was one of those assholes who thought Daniel Craig would be a bad James Bond and he sure showed us. So I'm willing to give this a shot. I really am. There's nothing I can do to stop this movie from coming out and it'd be stupid to even try. I'm going to see it on opening night. Probably once more that weekend too. Because above all else, I do not want this movie to fail. I don't consider myself a Marvel guy or a DC guy. I think that's stupid and reductive, but if I had to pick gun to my head, I would have to say I'm a DC guy. I grew up on Justice League, so seeing them in live action is like a dream of mine. And I'm certainly not gonna tell you not to see this movie. Please, by all means, go out and enjoy it, and I hope you like it. And if you liked Man of Steel, that's great. I'm genuinely happy for you. I just wanted to come clean and discuss what's been bothering me about Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and DC's entire cinematic universe. I feel like I've just been ranting and raving and not really being clear, so here it is all laid out bare for you. And with that all out of the way, I can go into Batman vs Superman with a clear heart and clear mind. Let's do this, guys. So thank you all for watching this. Talk to me down below or anywhere on the internet your opinions on Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and the upcoming DC Cinematic Universe. Uh, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with a friend. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. This, this week, week, they announced <laughs> okay. Zack Snyder is is indeed directing Justice League, and they start filming April 11th. That's like a month after Batman vs Superman comes out. It's good. not even. It's like two weeks. Now, the interesting thing about the Killing Joke is that it was not originally intended to be part of the ongoing Batman continuity. It was just a one-off story that aimed a little bit more adult. It didn't take place in any of the main Bat books, either Batman or Detective. It was its own separate thing.